during the announcement of Corona virus pandemic related economic package on 12th May 2020. The aim is to welcome foreign direct investment and technology, which shall translate to India being more self-reliant and being bigger and more important part of global economy. Examples of initiatives help Atmanirpar where the growth of India personal PP, I'm talking about the PPE kit sector from zero before March to 150 pieces a day by the beginning of May is considering a fine example of self-reliant India. The PPE industry in India has become a rupees 7,000 crores, approximately 980 million US dollars in two months, the second largest after China. The largest fund in the country worth rupees 21,000 crores was set up by IIT Alumni Council with the aim of supporting the mission towards self-reliance. India's own Make in India 5G network is also announced in July 2020 by Reliance Geo. Mukesh Ambani announced in mid-July and has created a 5G solution from scratch that will enable us to launch a world-class 5G service in India using 100% homegrown technologies and solutions. For the first time, in July 2020, it was announced that Apple would manufacture one of their premium iPhones models in India. To discuss all this, we have our guest of honor, Sri Suresh Prabhuji, Member of Parliament of Rajya Sabha, Prime Minister Sepa for G7 and G20. Sri Suresh Prabhu was formerly the Minister of Commerce and Industry and Civil Aviation in Narendra Modi's first government. Mr. Suresh Prabhu has held several government and semi-government positions, which includes the chairmanship of Maharashtra State Finance Commission, Saraswat Cooperative Bank, member of the Maharashtra Tourism Development Board and others. Held many other portfolios like industry, Minister of Environment and Forest, Minister of Fertilizers, Chemicals, Power, Heavy Industry and Public Enterprises. Mr. Suresh Prabhu was awarded the Indian of the Year in 2017, declared Best Member of Parliament in 13th Lok Sabha in 2004. Ranked as the second best performing minister in India, in India Today's report, on the performance of key ministers of government of India. Over to Sri Suresh Prabhu, sir. Suresh Prabhu ji, welcome once again in our show. Thank you so much for joining us. So thank you, Kirti. And I can see very illustrious friends of mine, uh, both are Chris and uh, Elias Kiran, who are going to speak about it with more authority because uh, they are the ones who, one has created a world-class services company, other has created world-class biotech company. So I think uh, they'll be able to really speak about what is really meant by Make in India. Let me just very briefly, because time is uh, short, talk about two, three things only. One is macro level. India today has got 16% of GDP, which comes from industry. Industry includes manufacturing, incidentally. And if you don't want to, you want to keep that ratio only at that level, it is very difficult to support even the services industry. Because you cannot, at this stage of development of India, you cannot have so much of a service-dominated economy. Services have to grow, but so is the other two underlying important pillars of economy, that's industry and agriculture, must also keep pace. Particularly for the size of population we have, as well as the stage of development we are in. And therefore, we had prepared a plan, as Commerce Industry Minister had prepared, to raise this present 16% to 20% in a overall vision that was prepared for $5 trillion economy. So if you want a $5 trillion economy, 20% of that, if it has to come from industry, that's a trillion dollars. And if you want to make it a trillion dollar coming from industry, we had also gone through each and every aspect of it. This was the former president of CIA. With them, I had prepared a complete, which particular segment of industry will contribute to that trillion dollar of industry. So it is very clearly laid down map. So this is a macro level picture. At micro level, where does industry start actually? Now you can say Infosys is based in India or Bio Kiran's company is based in India. But is it based in India? I mean where? Where in India? Because they are both in Bangalore, that is a different matter. But even if they are in Bangalore, that you can say they are in Karnataka, they would be in some local place. Of course, the kind of business that Chris is in, you don't have to be in a rural area necessarily. But many industry, 
when we talk about industry, they're largely into manufacturing, would be in some remote part of the country, and ideally it should be. Like, so the top Fortune 500 companies of the United States are not in New York, or not in San Francisco, or not in um, Chicago. They are many spread out all over the country. And so therefore, it's ideal that dispersal should happen, as well as it is logical that industry will not be only in major cities of India. So if you don't improve the infrastructure in districts, where the industry is finally going to be located, how do you make this make in India reality? To do that, I started at a micro level project that each and every district of India should grow at 3% more than normal growth. And to prepare that entire strategy as well as baseline, because if you're saying 3% more than normal, you first, first know the normal, that's the baseline. And therefore, that reports are also ready for six districts on a pilot basis, prepared by Indian Institute of Management and National Council for Applied Economic Research. And I've taken it to the second level of its development of that particular project. And if we can make that happen, what will happen is, Make in India presupposes not just making steel, not just making cement, not just making nuclear power plant. It also means making all kinds of products which will go into final manufacturing, that we should become part of global value chain or global supply chain. That means even small little component can also contribute significantly to make in India. And to do that, the small little districts, small little places will have to also have the same kind of infrastructure which is necessary for them to grow. And advantage will be that if it is dispersed on the scale that I'm talking about, automatically there will be an inclusiveness of that development, which should not happen as an afterthought, but should be inbuilt into the entire development model of the country. And therefore, I've already prepared it, it is already working. So one is my macro level, one is micro level. Now to make this happen, the small companies, even Kiran started in a very small little way. Even Infosys was started in a small little way. In fact, I was a banker of Infosys, so I know exactly their birth. But I'm not questioning where they were born. Like in US, sometimes you question the candidate, where was he born or where she was born. But I'm just saying, I know where Infosys was born. And therefore, uh, I, I'm not making any, I'm not asking for your birth certificate or a certificate of incorporation of your company. But I'm saying, I've seen the journey, how it started. And so where, how did they start? Did they become suddenly a few billion dollars company? They started as small little companies. So startups will be one of the very key component of India's Make in India campaign. And the startups need real support when they're really at that level of growth. And that's a law of, law of nature. Even small little plant needs nurturing. A small kid needs nurturing. Even any species gave birth to the next generation, they always take care of it in the first few years of infancy. So startups also need a lot of support, and that's why we call it incubation. But you know, incubation is not an artificial activity. You cannot have an incubator and put a board outside, I am an incubator, that's all. Nothing more than that. It cannot happen like that. So actual care and the kind of support that you need at that particular stage of Startup development is to be created as part of your commitment. And that's why we need to create that ecosystem which will ensure that a startups will not be stillborn, but will be actually be able to progress on their own strength and own steam over a period of time. The startup is the driving force of innovation. Startup will be the driving force for creating jobs. Startups will be the one who will actually create a new kind of ecosystem which does not even exist today. If you say that, where is the ecosystem for startup? That is a good question. But I was saying that today, we don't have to have Silicon Valley because we have Silicon. So if we can actually create a startup system on a real time basis, on online basis, possible. But the startup itself will, realizing the entrepreneurial opportunity, will fill in the gap and create what is really missing in that startup. Because that's a business opportunity for them. So what is necessary then? is allow entrepreneurship to blossom. That's the most important thing. And as a government, as a minister of commerce, I was when I was there, I used to say that I don't have right to question the entrepreneurial spirit of the country. Because entrepreneur know what he's doing. He's taking his own risk. He's pursuing his own idea. 
So I cannot sit on a judgment to decide whether the idea is good or bad. That's his idea, her idea. And let them take that idea forward. And only thing I should do is to allow that idea to go to fruition. And therefore, I must support them. So I think this is something which is very critical, very important for that to happen. I'm very sure we have that potential, we have that capability. And where the capability and the potential comes from? That comes from people of India. India's growth story is private sector driven. India's growth story is innovation induced. And therefore, we must never stifle that possibility and allow that to happen. And the only thing that we can do as a government is to make sure that we remove all the hurdles that are in the way of entrepreneurial spirit taking the next step forward. And that's very important. And that's the only thing that we can do. And if you do that, that will be the biggest contribution that we can make to make an India story. So I think I know there are very illustrious colleagues of and friends of mine who are going to speak. And I would therefore not talk. And I'm saying there is a ray of hope because Kiran is there. Asaka Kiran here. So therefore, there is nothing to worry about. And because there is a Gopal Krishnan who we just celebrated Krishna Jayanti only a few days ago. So I'm sure he will also create and you'll create new births of the kind that happened. So I think both are right people to talk about how to make make in India a reality. And let me tell you something, make in India must have design in India. You cannot make in India only by this. First, you must design in India. Number two, you must have IPRs in India. Then only you can actually succeed. And Kiran's company is a very good example of what, what is meant by IPRs. And therefore, I think if you don't have IPRs, that's a value, really speaking. If you don't capture that value chain in India, what we'll do will just remain as just makers and doers of some for somebody else's job. We should not do that. Therefore, I think we'll focus on that. So, Kirti, thank you very much. And you are all doing in Karnataka. So, I can always say because of my family name, I can say I was, though I was not born, but I can say I am also something to do with Karnataka because of the such illustrious people that at least something will rub on me. So, there I can say I have some connection with Karnataka thanks to my family name. So all the best to you. Thank you. Looking thank forward you. to. Thank you, sir. Uh, before before we leave, I would like to introduce our panelists for today. Uh, Ms. Kiran Mujumdar Shaw, Executive Chairperson from Biacon. Mr. Chris Gopal Krishnan, Executive Vice Chairman, Infosys. Mr. Janadam, President of HKCCI. Mr. Ravindra Pai, MD and CEO, Century Real Estate. And Mr. Anil Shetty. Would like to uh, introduce everybody and thank you so much for joining Mr. Suresh Prabhuji. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. Thank you. All the best.